We've all been to hell and back in some way, shape, or form in our lives. Well, you're about to meet a woman who is rocking life now, even though she has endured rape, verbal abuse, addiction, mental health issues, and career rock bottom, and the loss of her mother to COVID, who was her best friend. I want you to meet this amazing woman, a goddess named Candace Anthony. She is such an inspiration and she epitomizes the mission of the Goddess Power Show because she is turning her pain into power. And now she's living her life to the fullest as a digital content creator coach, as a wife, as a mother, as a businesswoman, and she's into physical fitness and you can see her gorgeous tattoos. So she's really living life boldly and doing her best in every way. So I want you to meet Candace Anthony. Candace, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so excited to talk to you and, and just get my message out there and really hoping to empower some women today because mm. that's what this is about. Welcome to the Goddess Power Show with Elizabeth Ann Atkins, the podcast for women exploring traditionally taboo topics as a portal to your power to live bigger, better and bolder and manifest your heart's wildest desires. Yes, excellent, excellent, Candice. Well, I met you in the context of you being a digital content creator coach, and I've learned so much from you. I interviewed you for Two Sisters Writing and Publishing, our YouTube channel there. So any writers out there, please check out the interview with Candice at the YouTube channel for Two Sisters Writing and Publishing. So Candice, let's just start with some of the lowest points of the things that you've experienced and have healed and released. So take us way back to the first traumatic experience. Um, I would say well, the first big traumatic experience for me, uh, you know, I was a really outgoing kid. I was the baby. I'm the youngest of four. And when I say youngest, my brother is 18. My two sisters are 16 and 14 years older than me. So they wow. were in high school. I was definitely the baby, mm -hmm. um, but I, I was spoiled and raised to be myself. And my dad was an entrepreneur all the time. Um, and he was constantly putting me out there, getting me, you know, in commercials and just pushing me to, you know, to, to be the center of attention, I guess. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, and then as I kind of got older, I fell into, you know, some bad crowds. I, I had some issues with, um, drugs you know doing drugs when i was younger i had um one instance that i can remember i had done a lot of drugs um like an upper and a downer uh one night and i like my mom wanted to take me to get my stomach pumped um and my grandmother ended up in the hospital that night having a stroke it that like was a significant point in my life where i was like okay i need to make a change mm -hmm. um so that was as I was a teenager. Um, going back a little bit more, uh, when I was younger, my father owned a car dealership and I was around that most of my life. I worked there, I think from the point I was like 12 um, until I uh, left, I guess, until I left. Um, and there were some instances there, sexual harassment and sexual assault, um, you know, older men. And at the time, you know, as a 12, 13 year old girl, you're like feeling great. You're getting all this attention. Um, and I think I think the moment the moment that it really hit me was when my daughters got older and I was like, oh, wait a minute. This is that was not normal. That was not OK. <laughs> that that behavior was not OK. Um, so but I was always supported i my family was always supportive of me no matter what mistakes i made you know my parents were always supportive um so when i was older i went to college i graduated high school i lived with my sister for a little bit um she got me through high school and um, i got to help her 
and my brother-in-law raised their kids for a few years, which was great being close to my nieces and nephews. Um, and I never wanted kids. Keep that in mind. Never wanted kids. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, cause she had four of them and she was busy Ooh. all the time. <laughs> okay. Um, but I, I went to college and I was about a semester into college and I, I met a guy um and ended up dating for a bit and took me back to his place one day a friend with a f girlfriend of mine um and she ended up getting sick and ended up like passing out on the couch and that night him and his brother raped me in his house and woke up the next day like nothing had happened and then after that i had a hard time going back to school because he was in my classes. He was in a couple of my classes. Uh -huh. um, so I picked up all my stuff from Central Florida um, and I moved back to South Florida, which was where my parents were. Mm -hmm. um, and that is where, again, I got into a not so great crowd. And that's when I was 19 to, well, that was when my mom wanted to take me to get my stomach pumped. Oh, okay. So yeah that um those are the pretty big traumatic things that stand out for me mm -hmm. when i was younger that kind of shaped me i think into the it took me from the person that i was when i was younger the outgoing center of attention um add <laughs> ADHD riddled mm -hmm. um, kid mm -hmm. that I just started to kind of grow this shell around me. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then my mom said, well, you can get the heck out or you can join the military. And oh, wow. I decided to join the Air Force. Oh, wow. Okay. The Air Force. Why did you yes. choose the Air Force? Um, well, why did I choose the Air Force? So I went to a couple different recruiters. Um, I was going back and forth between the Navy and the Air Force because, let's be honest, the Marines and the Army don't have the best track record when it comes to um, lifestyle as far as, you know, how you live when you're when you're in the military, right? Mm -hmm. They don't have as great of buildings, houses, mm -hmm. cars, you know, everything as far as the government goes. Mm -hmm. So um, I brittled it down to the Air Force and the Navy, and I thought that the Air Force recruiter was cute. <laughs> like I can. <laughs> Truth be told, okay. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest. It, and you know it. what? It was the best. My mom would always, anytime she would introduce me to her friends, she would say, oh, this is my daughter. I had to kick her out. But, you know, she went and joined the military, and now look at her. You know, it's like, oh, God. okay. Oh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> but she always, they were so proud. And, you know, I was going to join and I was going to do four years and go to college and then get out because uh -huh. I wanted to, I wanted to be like my dad. I wanted to own businesses. I wanted to be rich and famous and, you know, be an actress and make people laugh, you know, uh -huh. and, um, and then that ended up being 21 years. Oh, my goodness. So there was something about it that you liked. Absolutely. So I, I think that the structure and the discipline of the Air Force was exactly what I needed at that moment because mm -hmm. I wasn't going down a good path. Had I not joined the military, um, had I not been pushed toward that decision, um, I, I probably would have been dead. Oh, wow. I, I, who knows? Because uh -huh. I was just not making good decisions at the time. Mm -hmm. So um, did the military give you structure, discipline, a schedule, objectives that you had to really focus on to sort of pull you out of that pattern you were in? Yeah. So, yes. Um, when I got off the bus in basic training, I flew in from central or from South Florida. I'm a Miami girl. You can't mess with me. <laughs> and I got off the plane and I put my stuff down and this man that was about this tall uh -huh. came up and he said, told me to do something. And I kind of looked at him and rolled my eyes. And then he started yelling at me. And I swear to you, I have never wanted to go to the bathroom in my pants. <laughs> 
<laughs> as it. badly as I did at that moment. And then I realized, oh crap, what have I done? <laughs> <gasps> oh my goodness, what? Oh my goodness. But it, it honestly, it was the best thing that ever happened to me because I was able to do and learn and grow so much. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I it, it was, it was a great decision. Uh huh. But then it didn't end well. So take us there, please. Yeah. So, well, let's go to, I'm in, in the military. I'm in, um, my first base is Minot, North Dakota. Oh my, we Minot, went from Miami to Minot? North Dakota. Oh my God. That's trauma unto itself. I mean, the weather change, the culture. Woohoo! Yes, because I wanted to get as far away from Florida as possible, and they didn't send me overseas, so they sent me oh. to North Dakota. Oh my goodness, Candace. <laughs> I can't yeah. wait to hear what happens after this. <laughs> so, in North Dakota, when it's cold and there's nothing else to do, and you live in the dorms, you meet a guy. <laughs> okay, well, okay, that works. So, um, I ended up meeting my first husband. Okay. Who is also the father of my four children. Mm -hmm. um, I probably should have known the night that I met him um, to walk away, but obviously I had a reason for being there because I've been blessed with four amazing souls. So I love that. Um, but he ended up being so our, our first very first date, our first night together um, to get me to leave. He threw water on me. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, to get threw you water to leave. on me. Mm -hmm. Wanted me to leave for the night. <gasps> and he threw water. Like, how do you do that? Did he get he a cup? Took a, took a cup and said, "Go," and threw water on me. No. And my self-esteem, I was so low at that point. I went back the next day. <gasps> make that make sense for me, everybody. Make that make sense for those like of you out there that are dealing with it. Answer that question. Make that make sense. Oh, I have chills, Candace. But listen, we've all, in hindsight, looked back at relationships and things we put up with and endured, and we know it's abusive, and we go back for more and stay in it. Let me just share real quick. After my divorce, I suffered tremendous verbal abuse, and I was getting another restraining order. Now I have total peace with my ex, thankfully. It's all good. But... The lawyer said, you have battered woman syndrome. Now I wasn't physically battered, but I was emotionally so beat down just like you were in that moment that I couldn't see just how bad things were. So it's, it's a real, I guess we could call it a mental illness where we're unable to see the reality of the trauma that we're experiencing. So we've all been there, but guess what, Candace, you being here is going to show other women that you can rise up, find your power, find your self-worth and know that you will never tolerate that ever again. Never. Uh, so yeah, I, um, ended up staying with him long story short, um, for 16 years, <gasps> we had four amazing children, um, amazing each individual soul is so different and mm -hmm. so peculiar. Like their their little minds. I want to know exactly how they work all the time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so my way to, I guess, get through my marriage because he was an abusive, verbally and mentally abusive narcissist. Um, I mean bad bad you know those of you that have been there you've dealt with the the mind where you're wondering if your mind is playing tricks on you or if they're right or if did that really happen i, mm -hmm. I can't remember if that really mm -hmm. happened mm -hmm. um so because they just they tell their story so well they make you start believing it mm -hmm. um so he was extremely verbally and um, emotionally and mentally abusive to our oldest son, oh, um, wow. who I guess you could say was just different from what he wanted in his firstborn. Mm. Um, 
you know, he didn't want to play sports. You know, he, you know, always wanted to play with his sister or they wanted to make lemonade stands and nail polish stands. And I found out that he was gay at 13, 14 years old. And my, his dad, my ex, wasn't surprised, but his reaction was of um, something that he would support, but he wouldn't be supportive. Does that make sense? Can you just give an example? So he would support the fact that our son was gay. He would support that. He wouldn't try and push him to be anything else, but he wouldn't be supportive. And as a teenager <laughs> that's in the LGBTQ plus community, that you need somebody to be supportive, especially your parents. Right. So um, after that, I feel like it went downhill a lot mm -hmm. for my marriage. Um, and there were a few times, the last time, the last straw was he got into an argument with our son who was 14 or 15 at the time. And uh, we had two sets of stairs and he was chasing him down the hallway and my son fell down the stairs. And it was that night that I said, I'm done. I'm, I, I can't do this anymore. And I had previous to that, everyone, I had left him numerous times. Mm -hmm. I had left him numerous times. We had been separated for, I think the longest point was like three months. And this is, we were both military. So he was deploying, he would be gone for eight months, six months, you know, whatever. Um, which was great because I got to be just me and the kids. Yeah. <laughs> he was gone. Nice. Uh, so that was pretty much, uh, the end of that. That was the final straw. And it took, um, he ended up having to go into an inpatient, um, treatment facility for me to finally get away mm -hmm. from him. He was mm -hmm. in there for a little bit. Um, and that was my escape. Mm -hmm. So I took it and I immediately filed for divorce. I immediately started doing everything I could at that moment because I knew that that was my chance. Mm -hmm. That was my chance to finally get out. Right. Wow. And I don't know why I waited that long. Uh huh. I don't know why Wait. we wait that long. Let's please explore that because that's a question people always say, well, why didn't you just leave? So tell us about, I mean, you said he was deployed in a way for months at a time, but why, why didn't you leave earlier? Do you know now in hindsight, it's not as easy just to pick up and leave with four kids. It's just right. not. Right. And, and I think always about the money mm -hmm. and always about keeping, he would always say things like, you're going to take my children from me. You're going to keep my children from me. Mm. You're going to do all of these things, right? As narcissists do, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so he would say all of these things. And and, and, it, and truth be told, it, at the end of the day, it was him that mm -hmm. excluded himself from his kids that ended up in a hospital away from his kids because of his actions. You know, things like that. For the first four years after we divorced, he didn't even see like our little uh -huh. or small children because we have two older 21 and 19 and then we have a 13 and 11 year old so how old were your kids when you actually left i think uh he was three two or three. Oh, okay yeah okay. he was two or three and um and then my daughter was about five or six mm -hmm. so they were little they didn't understand it but the 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 day that i came home and told my older kids that i couldn't do it anymore mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. it was something they said to me that really put it in in perspective they said you're going to divorce him now right like this is it this wow. is it wow they wow. were done as well they uh -huh. were done as well so it was eye-opening and again, my chance, it was my chance and I took mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. 
Excellent. So. I just want to talk about narcissism for a quick minute. When you're suffering narcissistic abuse, and I did for many years in different with different people, you don't I didn't know what it was until I was out of it. And then I started learning on YouTube videos. What is it? What is it? And it was classic. And it's so traumatic to your self worth, your self esteem, your mental health, because they're so good at gaslighting. They change the way you think of yourself and everything else. It's horrible. So anybody who's recognizing this, please learn. And I also, another thing Candace was not so much blaming the other person, but seeing how can I heal and learn from this? Because mm -hmm. the other person's gone and done. It doesn't matter now. I just have to fix me. And so I spent years working through prayer, meditation, therapy, journaling, all the things. And so I just, a word to anybody listening, if you recognize that you might be uh, a, a victim of narcissistic abuse, which doesn't have to be physical at all. It's a, it's a mind thing. And so just learn about it and focus on healing, not shame, blaming, criticizing the other person. It doesn't matter. They're going to, they're not going to change. They don't change. They're just gone. So do you. Thanks, Candace, because you're a perfect example of this. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I'm, that was my, that was my ticket and I ran with it. Um, and just from there started to find myself again yes. uh, throughout the Air Force, right? I stayed in the Air Force. We moved a couple more times. Um, and then I uh, I was stationed in North Carolina uh -huh. and I had been in the Air Force for 19 years. Wow. And I made it, I was selected uh, my first time as the top 1% of the United States Air Force Enlisted Corps, a Chief Master Sergeant. Woo! Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, it was my it was my life goal. At that uh -huh. time, I was very career driven. I was a mom 100% of the time, but I was very driven by um, my Air Force career, how I could be the best airman, how I could help other airmen and how I could get to the top so that I could best do that. Because let's be honest, at the lower levels, you can't really make a lot of change up here. You can't. Uh huh. That was always my goal. Uh, and I did that and I was happy. I got remarried to my high school sweetheart. Oh, beautiful. We were, we were friends. Um, we were doing great. Uh, we had six kids together total. We had six kids. So we had five living in our house at oh, the wow. time. Wow. So wait, you Carolina. had your four children and then he brought two. Okay. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, so then I, the Air Force selected me to go to Turkey, to the country of Turkey uh -huh. by myself. I had to leave my kids behind who their dad, their real dad wasn't really in the picture at the time very much. Mm -hmm. He uh, just wasn't, wasn't really around. So he, the kids ended up, they, we ended up moving everybody from North Carolina to Florida. Mm -hmm. The kids stayed with my husband at the time, and uh, I went off to Turkey. Oh, wow. Which wouldn't, you wouldn't think it would be so bad, right? But it was. Yeah, it was. And a lot of, there were a lot of things within me, in my, within my own mental health that I never should have went there. I never should have went there uh, because of my previous mental health issues you know i had i had um bouts of depression anxiety panic attacks i was in the hospital with panic attacks once when i was in my 30s just because of my anxiety and my relationship and that in the marriage yes okay so, I, I wanted to ask you how did you heal but it didn't sound like you did you just kept yeah. moving Right. Okay. All right. <laughs> I just kept moving and that was uh -huh. pretty much it. I was, I was happy. Like I said, I married my high school sweetheart. The kids were happy. We had a house. Yeah, I was happy. I was happy. I was content. Mm -hmm. I wasn't truly me yet. I, I hadn't fully gotten back to who I really was inside without all of the other things, the military 
my husband's, all of that, my kids even, who was Candace? So I went to Turkey. Um, I was at the peak pinnacle of my career. I had made it and mm -hmm. I got to Turkey and I made a lot of mistakes. I drank a lot. I had an alcohol abuse problem. I drank every night uh, and I made a mistake and I had an affair for a long period of time and got caught. The military found out uh, there was there. There was a, an instance that happened one night where I was so blackout drunk, so blackout drunk. I cannot even tell you a period of like seven, six or seven hours. That is how blackout drunk I was. And during that time, I hit someone. I'm a, I'm an E9 in the United States Air Force on a military base in Turkey with only other military people. There's no families on this base. It is a remote location, right? No families, just the military people and the Turkish folks that work there. And it was very isolating. It was especially, I was at the pinnacle, I was at the top, but I was much younger than my peers because I had gotten there a little bit faster because of my hard work and my accolades and my recommendations, right? So it was challenging. And I turned to alcohol and sex. I mean, I think that's pretty much what it is. That's what I turned to because that's what I had there at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was nothing else in my head. There was nothing else. I couldn't I could have been reading, journaling. <laughs> I mean, there's so many things that now in hindsight, I'm like, I could have done all this, but everything uh -huh. happens for a reason yeah. and I don't take a second of it back. So uh -huh. it all brought me here. Okay. It all brought me to this place. Love that. So anyways, long story short, I lose my entire career. I'm forced to retire. <gasps> while, while I'm over there, on New Year's Eve, my sister called. I'm sorry if I get emotional. Okay. <laughs> While I was in Turkey on New Year's Eve, my mom contracted COVID and she passed away 11 days later. Oh no, I'm so sorry. No, I'm so crying. I couldn't. <laughs> I was overseas. Oh. I couldn't get home in time. And not, not, and it was COVID. It was fresh. It was January of 21. So. Oh even if I went I wouldn't have been able to see her you couldn't even go in the hospital at the time mm -hmm. so um after she passed I decided to stay in Turkey and just finish whatever short time I had left uh, which was very short it was only uh they sent me they let me leave in April I was demoted twice while I was there so I was demoted to master sergeant and I'm trying to get the Air Force to give me back my senior master sergeant rank, not my chief master sergeant rank. So it's like mm -hmm. not the top one, but the middle. So I'm actually fighting that right now because there were a lot of inconsistencies. Um, they knew a lot of things that were going on that they allowed to happen. My alcohol abuse. Um, I tried to commit suicide while I was there after my mom passed away. Oh no. Um, which luckily I failed. Yes. <laughs> I did because I can't imagine. Um, I can't imagine not being here now with your children and your, Ugh, your husband. Yes. So Candace, did they provide any mental health services for you? They did. Um, but unfortunately there the mental health services for that location and the mission and the airmen that were stationed there, the mental health services that were available were severely lacking. Mm. Uh, just because this location was known for having large amounts of sexual assaults, large amounts of alcohol abuse, um, suicide attempts, adultery happening between military members, uh, multiple on and on, the list goes on and on. It was challenging, but I got home <laughs> on my daughter's birthday in April of 21. And I wasn't me yet. And I think my kids could see it. They could see that I was a shell. At that point, I was a shell. 
Oh, no. I was a shell of who how I long, was. How long had you been gone? Okay. Nine months total. Um, I was away from them. So, wow. Did your kids understand why you were gone? They they understood. They they. I was in the military twenty years by then. Oh. So that was something that they lived with, right? They're military brats. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. They were military brats. So mm -hmm. they just went with it. When I got home is when I started to heal. Okay. It's when I started to focus on my mindset and uh, journaling and mm -hmm. meditating. Mm -hmm. Meditating is hard. <laughs> <laughs> meditating is not easy to do mm -hmm. um but and i'm still working on it mm -hmm. but through that process of learning who i was again i was able to get to know my kids again oh wow and i was able to be a mom mm -hmm. again which really after being gone for nine months I, that's what I needed. Mm -hmm. I needed that. They're my they're my safety. They're my safety switch. You know my, uh -huh. my parachute. Yeah. <laughs> so, wait, um, Candace, can you just take us back to that moment when you had to come home and face your husband after all of these things? Did he know why you were coming home? Yes. Um. That that's part of a lot of the bad things that happened to me when I was in Turkey. My my leadership and my husband were conspiring and it yes it was not um my husband at the time right uh, were conspiring uh to get me into trouble so yeah but he had your kids he ended up uh after i after he found out about the affair i filed for divorce and my kids went to stay with my sister Oh, okay, good. Because that would yeah. be an anxiety experience of like no, he, astronomically horrible. He, yeah, he rightfully so. I mean, I don't, I don't blame him. Um, I don't. I still hold him very dear, near and dear in my heart. He, we, he was my best friend growing up. We would still be friends, I'm sure, had it not ended badly. He is a wonderful person and a great soul. Mm -hmm. We just weren't meant to be husband and wife. Mm -hmm. We we were we were always better friends. Mm -hmm. And and that's kind of what our relationship was, which was great for me at the time, mm -hmm. coming out of an extremely abusive narcissistic relationship. Yeah. Where I needed somebody to kind of build me back up a little and yeah. remind me that I was beautiful and remind oh. me that I was smart. Yeah. And remind me that I could wear a tank top and get tattoos and people would be okay looking at my arms, you know, uh -huh. and uh -huh. stuff like that, that we need reminders of when people break us down so bad that we start believing all that mm. nasty stuff that they're saying, all yes. that junk that you're worthless, that you're ugly, that you're fat. You know, I was pregnant. I was pregnant four times with this man, four times. And every time I was pregnant, he told me that he hated pregnant women. They were the ugliest woman he had ever seen. Every oh, time. what? Wait, now wait, wait, wait. I, I see, you know, pregnant women should be worshipped. Totally. We create humans. It's your growing we should be worshipped for that. <laughs> Every person on this planet was created in a woman's body. We should be revered, celebrated, uh, worshipped, praised. It's a miracle. It's unbelievable. And you did it four times. <laughs> yeah. So I, that, it was great. We had, he was my best friend. Um, so I was very regretful that I hurt him. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I came back and I, I've since the day that I came back, I have been growing and learning every day. Wow. And uh, I ended up coming back and getting a job at Home Depot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I've, I have a master's degree. <laughs> I have tons of training, tons of experience, certifications. And I worked at customer service at Home Depot. That was the oh. job I could find at the oh. time that okay, was the wait. job i could find at the time 
Okay, Candace, take us to what you told yourself in the moment to get through that. I'll tell you what, at that moment, I needed to get back out there because in my mind, I was a worker. I was an airman. I needed to get out there and help people, right? In my mind, customer service was the closest and fastest and easiest thing that I could get mm -hmm. because there were not a lot of um, jobs that I was qualified for mm -hmm. that were open, uh -huh. right? More of the high tier jobs, cor corporate positions, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went to the Home Depot. I loved it. Uh -huh. I had a blast every day, <laughs> every single day I worked there. I loved it. I love DIY stuff anyways. Uh -huh. So it was great to, I got to talk to people about their projects. Uh -huh. um, so that was a really great experience. Uh -huh. And while my daughter ended up coming to work there. Uh -huh. And while I was there, I met my now fiance. We've been together two years now. Um, Charlie. Wow. Charlie. That's and amazing. I manifested this man. Oh, this you is did? The man that I manifested from my childhood. Oh, how did you do that? Tell me. He is, you know, when you're a little girl. Uh huh. You're a little girl. Uh, for me, it was Prince Charming, you know? Yeah. Uh, Disney princes. Right. Not realistic, honestly. <laughs> but it, it was always, you know, the man that was going to worship me and and be my biggest fan mm -hmm. and my best friend. Mm -hmm. And I would be able to do the same for him. And mm -hmm. just a legitimate partner. Mm -hmm. Partner. Mm -hmm. All the time, in every way, shape, and form. Mm -hmm. So, but down to his hair color, his eye color, his, his height. He is the man that I manifested. Beard, everything. <laughs> wow. wow. Yes. So um, manifesting is real, people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you say it, did you just dwell on the image in your mind and feel the feelings of having him come into your life? I, every time I thought of the man of my dreams mm -hmm. in the in in the aspects of partnership, um, respect, mm -hmm. commitment, mm -hmm. those things. Yes. I mean, I've always wanted, especially when I was with my first husband, mm -hmm. I would sit there at night crying in the bathroom alone, quietly, so my kids couldn't hear me, dreaming, dreaming about finding someone that could come in and get me and my kids out of that, right? Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> um, but yeah, we met at the Home Depot. <laughs> And yeah, we have built our own little empire here. We have five kids. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mine and then our tiniest human is Archer. Um, oh. Yes, he's amazing. He, I'm his bonus mama. And <laughs> um, that's a job in, a, in and of itself, mm -hmm. being a bonus mom, because you don't want to overstep but you really want to give your whole heart, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe not a bonus, maybe bonus mom isn't the right word. I'm I'm like, I want to be her sidekick. I want to uh, be her, her backup, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. I want to be her backup. And because that's what I always wanted for my kids. That's what I always wanted for my children is to have that relationship that I can text her right now and it didn't it wasn't always like that it wasn't always like it took her about a year and a half before she would talk and trust me enough to have conversations about our little guy are you talking because about your daughter no my my um archer's mom oh okay so I, I'm I'm the bonus mom for Charlie's little guy Archer. Mm -hmm. Yes, Archer's mom is Charlie's Archer's ex. Mom. Yes. Okay. His, his ex. It's hard to say. How do you even say that? My son's mom. 
that doesn't make sense because he's my son. He's my yeah. he's my stepson. <laughs> uh huh. Oh, okay, his biological Fine. mother. Yeah, his his bio mama, his Bi his mama. <laughs> um, I just think it's funny. My son's mom. It all sounds so formal. So bio mama, that's cool. Yeah, bio mama. Um, uh huh. It 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 wasn't a an easy relationship to form. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and for the longest time, I would because uh, Charlie, my fiance, and his ex don't don't get along. The less they talk, the better everyone is. Oh, okay. <laughs> so then having you know, a relationship with you to trust you with her child. Okay, I get that. <laughs> would be difficult, right? Yes. You want. And as the person that's, uh, he, we are 50, 50, we're 50, 50 mm. custody. Mm -hmm. So I'm with him half the time. It was very, very, very important to me to form a relationship with her so that she knew that I wasn't trying to take anything from her. Mm. I wasn't trying to take her position. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take her. She is mom. Yes. Nobody will ever hold mm -hmm that pedestal except mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. i wanted her to know that i was her backup oh you know okay. i'm her sidekick uh -huh. i'm whatever you need yeah whether they get along or not mm -hmm. that's why i'm here i'm the middleman make me uh -huh. the middleman uh -huh. right um and i tried for a long time to start a relationship with her i would every, every time he would leave here whether it was for two days three days four days i would send her a text with what we did if he ate something new um archer is on the spectrum so when we first started dating he was uh nonverbal. he's much better um communicating now but it's still challenging so for us to communicate is so important wow so important wow to make sure that we're all on the same page yeah him mm-hmm so um i every i just stayed consistent i stayed consistent i continued to send her the texts even when she wouldn't respond i continued to send the texts when she had me blocked for a period of time i continued to send the texts. wow i i continued to be consistent because i knew the most important thing was the little guy that's the right. most important thing Yes. I don't matter. She doesn't matter. It's it, it it's him. We have to raise this human. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure this human is a good person. Mm -hmm. So, uh luckily, uh I was able through being consistent and just being myself and just being honest with her. I was always honest with her even when she didn't like it. Mhm. Mm you know, mm -hmm. uh, so I I just felt that was important. Mhm. Mm because of the relationship that we needed to form for the tiny human. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so luckily now we talk all the time. We send oh. pictures back and forth, videos. Wow. I'm, I'm so thankful that I stayed consistent yeah. because it has been so beneficial for the tiny man. Oh, so that's if, so if, beautiful. If anybody out there is struggling with having to share, you got to share your kids, right? Uh, you're oh. divorced or separated. Just be consistent. And wow. what would you want for your kid? What right. Would you want for your kid? I think that's the most important thing. Wow, Candace, that's a bonus lesson here. By example, that's beautiful. The Goddess Power Show with Elizabeth Ann Atkins is sponsored by two sisters writing and publishing, celebrating and showcasing diverse writers with memoirs, business books, novels, erotic fiction, and monthly writing contests, whose winners get published in international anthologies. Read all about it, along with best selling books, short stories, and the blog at two sisters writing.com. You can even apply to publish your book on the two sisters writing and publishing global platform writing is power activate it with the power of your pen thank you sponsors for supporting the goddess power show with elizabeth ann atkins yeah so we've got our own little thing going on here and mm -hmm. i decided to i after all of that i decided i wanted to be an entrepreneur uh-huh I 
started looking into being a content creator. Um, tried just jumping on socials. Oh, I can do this. This is easy. People are out here doing this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> I love Not it. Not that easy. Uh -huh. But I have learned so much. Mm -hmm. I've learned so much. And it's, there's the possibilities um, in the online arena in a digital space to be an entrepreneur. The, there's so many different ways. So it blew my mind. And uh -huh. that's where I've been on this road now for about a year. Um, just wow. learning everything I can uh -huh. about about marketing and how to make money online and mm -hmm. the different ways you can do it and mm -hmm. and helping people mm -hmm. uh, meeting wonderful people that are doing it amazing uh -huh. marketers millionaires that I'm talking to every day and and they're the most wonderful genuine helpful people mm -hmm. you know and it's like dang you see these people online you don't know you right. don't know what life is really like so mm -hmm. it's it's nice when you put yourself out there in the online realm mm -hmm. and you're accepted yeah <laughs> beautiful candace so tell us where we can find you and learn about the services that you offer as a digital marketing coach so um yeah absolutely i uh, my marketing website is just a marketing chick Dot com and if you sign up for my mailing list i send emails all the time with uh deals the other day i just created the 50 50 best prompts to starting a video and oh. i just created it in a few minutes and i was like oh let me send this to my email subscribers just because why not oh why not? i want that <laughs> i'll send it to you subscribe okay but but uh, I'm learning all of these things. What does it help me to keep it in this little tiny brain? Uh -huh. It doesn't do me any good. Uh, uh -huh. So if I can put it out there and and teach other people these things, most importantly, my children, mm -hmm. they're the number one people that I'm teaching how to do this. Mm -hmm. They're gonna build their own digital empires. They're gonna have generational wealth for yes. their families because yes. I'm like, Look at this. Did you see this? I learned this today. Oh, that's so cool. That's awesome. That's, it, it's all there. And if I'm learning it, I want to put it out there. So mm -hmm. I do that. And then I'll, also, I'm in Florida. And as you know, I'm very big into female empowerment. Mm -hmm. I think that we as women tend to put each other down mm -hmm. uh, more then build each other up. Mm -hmm. So I, I went into um, about a year ago, I started just a Florida chick. Then it's a Florida based uh, business. It's pop ups that we will host uh -huh. around Florida. And we've done three or four now, uh, St. Augustine, but it's to bring women together that wouldn't normally be in the same space. Oh my god. Right? Uh -huh. So, you know how the algorithms work. Yeah. Typically, when you start talking to people on the internet, TikTok, Instagram, whatever, you have the same likes. You you tend to share the same thoughts, mm -hmm. maybe. Right? I can tell you that I have personally met through this um, Joseph Florida Chick pop-ups. I have personally met five of my very closest friends and two of them I have never even met in person. Wow. Never even met in person. What? Never even met them in person, but I'll tell you right now, if I needed something or they needed something, we would drop everything and go to wherever. Just wow. because we've been able to build each other up. Oh my we've goodness. We've been able to support each other in whatever Ooh. it is. Uh -huh. I may be a digital marketer and another mom might be a beauty influencer. Mm -hmm. That's great. I'll get on your page every day and I will tell you how good you look. <laughs> I will I will get on there every day. Uh -huh. Trust me. Uh -huh. We have to build each other up. 
Yes, that's why we're here on the Goddess Power Show. That's all we're all about that. So Candace, how can people learn more about just a Florida chick pop ups? Are they virtual or in person? So they're in person. Yeah, they're uh-huh. in person. Uh, we, uh, we have three that are going to be scheduled for early next year, Jacksonville, Tampa, and Orlando. Mm-hmm. Um, if you go to just a Florida chick.com, uh, I believe I sent you the websites, but there is a box down there that you could sign up. There's also a box you can sign up for subscriptions. Mm-hmm. There's all kinds of stuff out there on mm-hmm. just a Florida chick.com because I like to throw out uh, things that I find, different programs, how to make money online, uh, how to use chat GPT. Uh, we've got family stuff out there soon. My kids will have stuff out there. My daughter has an Etsy shop now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I am so excited for them. That's My awesome. son is super involved in his video game. And now mm-hmm. he's like, Oh, now I see when they say click here to buy this, they get paid for that. Right. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Love it. Love it. Love it. So speaking of family, what's your father think of all the things you're doing now? So my father uh, passed away in 2019. I'm sorry. 2019. He, um, my dad, <laughs> my other guardian angel, they're both there. They're little oh. blue jays outside my window usually is where oh, they're Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Um, but he um, ended up fighting off three different kinds of cancers, including oh a brain God. tumor. Oh. And then got diverticulitis and had to have surgery. And when he had the surgery, he ended up getting very sick and he got septic and he just passed after that. Luckily, we were able to spend some quality time with him months mm-hmm. the months kind of before mm-hmm. i was stationed in north carolina at the time and i was able to go back and forth a lot which was great because that was the closest at that point i had ever been to home oh eight hours away wow because he was your inspiration for being an entrepreneur as you were growing up so that's pretty phenomenal yeah. that you've become that now your next generation your children are doing the same my dad, I mean, I have commercials of my dad. Um, he used to be like a freelance advertiser. He had owned an advertising company. Uh-huh. He would, uh, I've got one of him dressed up as Indiana Jones, pretending to be <laughs> um, being chased by lions. I'm like, well, no wonder oh, no, where so I get fun. it from. Oh, no I love where it. where I get my comedic genius from. <laughs> uh, but so- yeah, he was great. Yeah, I'm so sorry, but he's living, his spirit is living on and birds indeed are messengers from the divine. So it's cool that you see it that way. Um, So Candace, what I'd like to hear from you is three things you can tell any woman out there who needs to turn her pain into power, especially if she's at rock bottom professionally, personally, or coming back from something terrible. What are three things they can do to shift their mindset and heal so that they can rise from where you were to where you are now? Well, the first thing I'm going to say is every day, remember, and I don't know if you can see this, but this is this is on my computer every day when I walk in to start working. To remind me, it says, what three things are you grateful for today? Mm. What three things are you grateful for today? And every day it changes, it varies. Um, you know, the other day it was because we bought toothpaste, <laughs> you know, because we didn't have any the day before and I had to borrow one of the kids. Um, <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Gratitude. Um, but I try to remember that, yeah, sometimes things are bad and sometimes they're really bad, but I can always find at least three little things to be grateful for. Mm. And once I do that, my mind shift starts to change from only thinking of the bad to thinking of the little things that I'm grateful for. Yes, 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 yes. I like to make it little things just because I'm always grateful for my house. I'm always grateful for my kids. I'm always grateful for my fiance. I'm grateful for food and water, but I'm grateful that there was toilet paper on the roll when I was in there, you know, and, and I'm 
grateful that the sun is shining today and it's not freaking raining again in Florida for the 18th time in a row. <laughs> for the 18th day in a row. Uh, the other thing I would say is affirmations. Mm -hmm. And really looking at yourself in the mirror and telling yourself all those things that everybody tells you you're not. You're, I am beautiful. I am successful. I am a businesswoman. I am an amazing mother. I am a great friend. Those things, say them to yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror. Journaling. Yes, yes, yes. Journaling would be the number three thing and never giving up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No matter what anybody says. Mm -hmm. That was four, but I could keep going. Oh, okay. I'll hear a few more, please. They're awesome, Candace. <laughs> um, can't. So when somebody tells me that I can't do something, that is like a trigger word mm -hmm. and makes me want to learn how to do it so much more. Yes. Uh, I think that's uh, something that I was afraid of before. Mm -hmm. I was afraid of before. And now I can stand here and say, oh, you told me I can't. Okay. <gasps> Sounds good. Uh, I love you know, pick, that. Picking and choosing your battles, of course, uh -huh. but don't ever let anybody tell you you can't do something. Yes, yes. So people come to me all the time and they want to write a book, right? Because our company is Two Sisters Writing and Publishing. And they're like, lots of people have said, you can't write a book. Who do you think you are? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, don't talk to them anymore. Just invite them to your book party and yes. autograph a book saying, yes, I can. <laughs> yes, <Yep>. I did. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh -huh. <laughs> Love your tips. Okay. What, so did you ever master meditation? I'm still working on it. I am getting better. Uh, it, it's my mind for me. It's my brain is constantly going, especially because I'm trying to learn so much and in this new space in being a digital marketer and trying to help people as much as possible and mm -hmm. create products to help people and get this knowledge out of here and onto paper. Mm -hmm. My mind, I've got... I sit there and I'm like, okay, thinking about my breathing. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh, well, wait a minute. You could do this. Oh, oh, you could do this. So what I what I did to kind of I, I realized that I couldn't keep it away. I couldn't keep all the thoughts away. I just I at this time I haven't mastered that yet. It's not that I can't, I just haven't okay. mastered it yet. Uh-huh. So what I did is I just put a notepad next to me. And if I think about something a couple of times, I just take a minute and I write it down and mm -hmm. I go right back to what I was doing. Just taking a minute and breathing and calming myself down. So I've got it there and now I've got four notebooks. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. So I've been journaling as long as I can remember, Candace, and I journal every day throughout the day, evening, morning, just before bed. And I view it as purging if I'm upset. It's like when you have an upset stomach because you ate something bad and you throw right. up and you feel better. So you're purging that emotion. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I've got a, uh, my, I feel like my brain has a lot of ideas. Uh huh ideas for lots of things work home kids clothes hair everything I, mm -hmm. there's ideas flowing through here all the time because mm -hmm. you know add mm -hmm. um i was blessed um i was blessed with the add so if i write it down i've got it oh i've got it there and then yeah. i can go back to it later if uh -huh. i if i don't write it down i would forget it yeah and then i would get frustrated with myself uh-huh not remembering Wow. So that's why I, it breaks me from the meditation at that moment, but it helps my mind get back to where I need to be because I just get rid of it. Oh, okay. Well, Candace, I'm a certified intuitive practitioner teaching the healing arts that include energy clearing and meditation. And I uh, have the Goddess Power Retreat because when I do a guided meditation, you don't have to 
figure it out. You just close your eyes, sit back, and I guide you through it. And so I also am going to resume my weekly guided meditations and energy clearings. So stay tuned for that. So I'll send you some information. Yeah, I it's would awesome. Love that. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I would love to be able to master it. Just not there yet. <laughs> yeah, but when I first started in 2010, my brain was all over everywhere, but it changed it enabled me to heal a lot of the things i mentioned earlier and release them to cr clear space to become who i am today which is i've never felt better in my head about myself in my entire life it took a long time but here i am and that's why i do the show because i show by example and teach all the things that have helped me rise up from despair and depression and suicidal thoughts and trauma and all that stuff. Anyway, I'm so grateful that you're here, Candace, sharing. It takes so much courage to bear your soul like that and share things like that you did that you've overcome. But look at you. You're radiant. You're rocking it. You're amazing. You're beautiful. You're, you're so smart when it comes to the online digital marketing because I interviewed you, like I said, last week for Two Sisters Writing and Publishing's YouTube channel. Everybody, I'll put the link here so you can check out that if you're interested. She's like this wellspring of knowledge and it's just, I, I can't I, wait to watch again and learn more. Um, so Candace, is there anything else you'd like to share with women who are either watching or listening about how to turn your pain into power? I would say, don't give up, reach out to someone, reach out to me. I'll help you get through it. Let's go, let's do it together. But you can do it. You can do it. I've done it. Elizabeth has done it. We can do it. You can do it. That's what I would say to them. Because sometimes you need that reminder. You just need somebody to stand there and look you in the eye and say, you, can do it right so you can and you are stronger than you know i promise you that sis Woo! i have chills <laughs> from head to toe and tears in my eyes candace that is so powerful wow it it it's so true we are our own worst enemies sometimes and the more that you get in here and shift that mindset to all of the amazing things that you are, there you, there you go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You are great. Mm -hmm. You are great at something. Mm -hmm. Find something. I had a friend, someone I met on TikTok. She is my friend. I've never actually met her, but she came across a video that I made and she said, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I am sad. I am broken. I have never met her. We were not friends on social media before this. I friended her immediately and I messaged her and we have become friends since then. But she just needed somebody to remind her. I said, give me one thing. Give me one thing in your life that is good right now. Oh, I can't. Everything is so bad. It's so bad. I said, you can give me one thing. You can give me one thing. And she said, well, my daughter. I said, okay. <laughs> give me another thing. Uh -huh. Give me one more thing. Uh -huh. One more. Give me one more. Give uh -huh. me one more. Uh -huh. And she kept giving it. Oh, wow. And, and we're friends now on socials and I check in with her every once in a while and she's not a hundred percent yet, but she's getting there. Oh, that's she's amazing. Getting wow. So, yeah. That's it, awesome. It, that's, the best, that's the best thing about being on social media too, is, is the community and the people yeah. you get to meet. Over. Yeah. You could literally save a life or more like that. Wow, Candace, you are a powerhouse. You are truly a goddess helping us all live bigger, better and bolder as you are as evidenced by your gorgeous tattoos. Thank you. <laughs> They're so what do they mean? Um, well, these are my kids names. My oh. nephew did some of this artwork. I did, oh. got this in Turkey. That's my mermaid. Oh, it's a mermaid. Okay. Everywhere. Yes. She goes with me everywhere. And then I just, I just love the art. 
of uh-huh. tattoos and and the expression uh-huh it's beautiful and it's meaningful to you yes yeah. oh yeah absolutely every every bit of it mm, beautiful i beautiful. talked about my grandbaby what no yep. you did not grandbaby uh-huh i gotta come back and talk about him oh okay the All life right. my life oh how old is he he is 18 months when i got back from turkey my daughter was a senior in high school and she was 17 and ended up getting pregnant with um a guy she had gone out with on a date a couple of times and it's been the best thing that's ever happened like they are together raising (gasps) him yeah and he is probably i mean i've never and i'm not saying this kind of because i'm his grandma but i've never seen a smarter baby because she is a stay-at-home mom and she gets to be one-on-one with him and love that i love that she gets that opportunity that's such a blessing and a luxury actually it is it is Mm -hmm. it is Mm -hmm. so oh my goodness yeah that was you know everything happens for a reason yes absolutely oh Candace, I am so grateful for you taking the time to share your amazing story and inspiration and instructions to all the women out there who need to turn their pain into power. And you had so many lessons uh, in your story showing us, not just telling us how to do it. So Candace, any parting words? Nope. Just follow me on Just a Florida Chick. Um, I'm on all the socials, just an FL chick or just a marketing chick. Mm-hmm. You can check out my websites, just a marketing chick.com, just a Florida chick.com. And I'm also just Candace Anthony on Facebook. And I've got the blue verified check. So that <laughs> one's the only one that's me. <laughs> awesome. Okay, Candace. Well, I wish you the best. And I'm so grateful for you showing the women out there and men who are watching to understand these issues as well uh, or listening that it is truly possible to rise up from bad places and come to a happy powerful successful place where you're able to showcase your story to help others turn their pain into power absolutely thank you (laughs) thank you so much for the opportunity You're so welcome. You're so welcome. And I'm Elizabeth Ann Atkins here at the Goddess Power Show. I'm so grateful that all of you stayed to the end so that you could hear every bit of Candace's wisdom. And I hope you follow her because she is a powerhouse of knowledge that can help you. So meanwhile, remember, Goddess, that you have the power. So is the Goddess Power Show with Elizabeth Ann Atkins inspiring you to live bigger, better and bolder and manifest your heart's desires? Then please subscribe, rate, review and share the podcast to help more women experience these life shifting ideas. You can also watch the Goddess Power Show with Elizabeth Ann Atkins on YouTube. You'll find the link at thegoddesspowershow.com. While you're on the website, read the blog and see how Elizabeth's retreats can help you activate your female superpowers and make magic happen in your life. Enjoy novels and don't miss her latest book, The Biss Tribe, Activating Your Goddess Power by Elizabeth Ann Atkins. Find it all at the Goddess Power powershow.com to rock your realm from a throne of power wearing a crown of confidence to manifest your heart's greatest desires remember goddess you have the power